Hey there, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. It's snowing outside today here in Colorado, but it's a little bit warmer here in the cool tent. This is the tent in my basement. I've got an SF1000 light and a Vivor tent here. And uh, these are my plants that the temperature, the temperatures in this tent are about, um, what, 70 or 21 degrees Celsius during the day and down to about 58, 59 degrees at night, which I believe is like uh, maybe 13, 14 degrees Celsius. So, cool tent, doesn't get super warm in here, doesn't get super cold, uh, but the issue with the cool tent has been from day one is it getting too much light? Is this light too much for these plants? So I've been watching them very carefully. And the first indication that I see of, of light is my Pinguicula morinensis here. You can see pink edges, very rosy pink edges. Also on this hybrid, this I believe is a pirouette, also rosy pink edges. So these guys don't turn pink unless they're getting plenty of light. So. It doesn't mean too much, it just means a lot, a high level of light. Um, and if I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, another plant I'm looking at as an indicator is this Nepenthes bonzo hybrid. It's just now putting out a new leaf, and I don't know if you can tell, but the new leaf has a little bit of a rust-colored tinge to it, especially on the left side. And I don't know if that means that it's receiving the high end of the exceptional, uh, of the acceptable range, or if it's receiving too much. When I look at an older leaf, this green one, um, I don't see any red tinge. It looks fine. The leaf looks healthy. So I would have to say my, the results are inconclusive for this plant as well. It is putting out a nice new picture and the lid is popping on it, so that's fun. Um, another possible indicator, here's my Nepenthes Raja by Edwardsiana. Just put out a new leaf as well. And again, not seeing any red tinge, reddish tinge on that leaf, looks green and only green. So perhaps, perhaps this plant is receiving an adequate or an ideal amount of light, not too much. The older leaves do have some spots, but those spots occurred before this plant was moved into this tent. All right, what else have we got? Nepenthes uh, Raja by Velosa, also known as Kinabaluensis. It's a natural hybrid. Um, new leaves on these guys. Am I seeing evidence of too much light? Well, the thing is I don't know exactly what too much light looks like in some of these plants. So I'm just looking for overall signs of leaves not looking good. This plant looks okay. I don't know if the red stripe down the middle of the leaf there is a good thing, bad thing, or a, a neutral thing. But, I mean, overall I would say this plant looks okay. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it looks like it's, it's suffering from anything, but again, it's a learning curve. I don't really know. When I look at some of the seedlings of the same cross, they're looking kind of pale. Could that be a result of too much light? Maybe. It could also be a result of not enough nitrogen. Um, these plants are so small, I'm not able to feed them in their traps. Um, I do have a small syringe I could inject fertilizer into the tiny pitchers. I've been advised that that's something you can do. I haven't tried it. But, um, Again, really red stripes down the middle of the leaves. Really nice little red pitchers. Looks like new growth is emerging without a problem. So, are these guys in an ideal light situation? Too much, too little? Still inconclusive. We move over to Bulbophyllum crocium, 
this is a pretty delicate little plant, but I've read such conflicting information. It grows in deep, deep shade. Can grow in full sun. So what's the truth? I don't know. All I know is that this plant's been living down here for, well, several weeks now, and I'm not seeing any real immediate signs of, of problems. There is some lightning. Oh my gosh, my nails are so long. My apologies. There is some lightening of the color here. The green isn't quite as... It's kind of a little bit lighter there, but I don't know. I'm watching this new leaf come up, and we're going to see how it develops and see what it looks like. My Zygopetalum uh, maculatum. This one does, it looks a little pale here. The leaf, the, it's not a rich green, it's kind of a pale green. It's a little bit lighter than I think what I'd be comfortable with. But again, this is a new plant and I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It looks a little pale. And it's not an, a uniform, it's kind of greener down the middle and lighter on the edges. I don't know. It was also recently, you know, a few weeks ago, it was transplanted. It has new growths coming up. I'm going to watch these. I'm going to watch this new growth. We're going to see if those come out and the leaves look decent or if they look chlorotic, weird patches. That might tell me something. We've also got my Mazda Valia, Machu Picchu. This flower's just starting to fade. This one's still going strong. Very, very beautiful bright colors on these. Got another flower on the way here. These leaves look great. It's put out some new leaves. Here's, a new, here's one of the new ones. No, wait. Where's one of the new ones? Here's one of the new ones right here. They look good. Here's a new one back here. This is a new one. They look good. No no complaints. They look great, actually. So, Mastavalia is not giving me... These are all some older leaves. They are turning a little yellow, but they did that in the other tent as well. So I don't have some a really clear indication of if it's too much, too little, or just right for Mastavalia Machu Picchu. Over here we've got my Dendrochylum tenellum. Really hard to tell if anything's wrong with this guy. Super skinny little leaves there. There is some leaf dieback, but I believe that this is because this was happening a lot over the winter. I think the plant was being kept too dry. Now it's in a nice little, uh, it's got a little, uh, pot down here that has just a tiny bit of water at the bottom so the, the, the mix is always moist. And I think it looks decent. It looks better than it did. So I, I, I don't see any indication that that's too much light for that plant. Okay, now we've got my new plants. These are from Vitis Botanical in South Carolina. I moved all mo most of the new plants, uh, the Brassias and this uh, Notar, I moved them down into the cool tent. I read that they, they can take cooler temperatures, and so just in the interest of saving space right now, they're going to be down here. And again, it, they've only been down here a week, so really can't have any, any indication of whether or not... I, I've read that Brassia like bright light. Well, this is very bright in here, so... They should be happy. The Notara, um, I don't know. I don't know if this is a more medium light plant or if it also likes bright light, but we're gonna see how it does. It, it does look a little chlorotic, a little bleachy, but it looked like that when I got it. I need some time, especially again, new leaves coming out. When the new leaf grows out, that gives me like a clean slate to see how the plant's actually doing in these conditions. So, got a few Brassia. A lot of you told me, yeah, brassies get really big, William. I'm like, I know, and that's why I'm looking at another tent to move these guys into some of the bigger plants. But I'm happy we've got a nice growth here. Again, we're going to be watching these for indications of too much, not enough, or just right light. 
Okay, great. We're at 10 minutes. Oh, I'm gonna fall over. Uh, let's go upstairs real quick and look at my uh, my uh, windowsill plants, and that'll be it for this week. Lovely snowy day here in Colorado. You can see the there is some green coming through on the trees, but uh, green or not, we still have snow possibilities of snow well into the end of May. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, my tiny little collection of succulents, which I never intended to even happen, uh, is, is slowly growing. I got a new plant, again, from Vitis Botanical. Uh, they have all kinds of unusual aloe plants. So this is an aloe arenacea. It is very unusual and certainly not what you would think of when you think of an aloe. But it's not a mean plant. It won't uh, stick you. Um, but it's just kind of got these fleshy tendrils all over it. And uh, it's kind of cool. I don't know how big it'll get, but uh, it's, kinda, it's been potted up for me. I guess this is some kind of grit. I don't know if there's any actual soil in there. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of cool. And then, of course, I have a, a Worthiopsis tessellata that just always keeps blooming. I don't know why. And then another Haworthiopsis that um, my mom has had this plant since I was a little kid and that it just keeps making little, you know, babies off to the side. So this is some of those babies. And then of course the ubiquitous Crassula ovata, the jade plant. This was given to me as a housewarming, plant, uh, housewarming gift in 2017, I think. And uh, it's bigger than the original plant. So back here we've got my grocery store phalaenopsis. It's a white one, and you can see that uh, my dream of growing a vertical spike on the phalaenopsis is coming true here. Those first buds should be leaning over towards the light and starting to bloom out. So I can't wait to see what that's going to look like. And then my Clivia miniata, the flowers are pretty much done on this guy. But uh, we're officially into the growing season, so I'm trying to keep the medium. It's potted in a, a mix of uh, succulent mix and orchid bark. And then whenever there's dead flowers or anything like that, I crumble them up and stick them on the top here. And I just try to keep it uh, regularly moist, consistently moist. I sprinkled some Osmocote pellets in there to give it some fertilizer. And I just uh, that's just what I do with it. It's here in the east window, so it gets morning sun. And, uh, yeah, it seems to do well. It's put out a lot of new growth in the past couple years, and I'm sure it's getting to the point where it's, it's pot-bound. Um, but until there's absolutely no room in the pot whatsoever, I'm definitely going to keep it in there. They don't like to be repotted. They don't like to be divided up. Uh, it takes them some time to recover from that. So. so that's all i got for you. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking on my green pets. I'm William Green, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.